Hello and welcome to Midtown Fiber. My name is Eileen and I live in Indianapolis in the United States. And I am wearing an incredibly warm sweater at the moment. I'll tell you all about it in a second. But welcome. For those of you new here, uh, you can find me at Instagram at Midtown Fiber and on Ravelry at Midtown Fiber. And uh, for those returning, thank you for returning. If you are enjoying this podcast, please go ahead and like and subscribe below. I had a lovely group of folks come join over the last couple weeks. It's been so wonderful um, engaging with people. I really love that. That's kind of the point, right? Or for me anyway, um, of doing this podcast is to connect with people. So it's wonderful um, if I can, you know, hear from you on your views on what I'm podcasting about, if you have some other things you're interested in hearing about, or if you have projects that are ongoing and you're also hitting some of these like <laughs> moments, welcome. <laughs> um, I think I got all the administrative stuff out of the way. So sit back. We're going to chat a little bit today about some things and some stuff, some moments that were had on my knitting adventures this last <laughs> few weeks since my last podcast. It has been a couple weeks, and every time I hear that, I don't know if any, any other fallen Catholics over here, but every time I hear it's been X number of weeks since my last podcast, all I can think of is confession, and it's weird, and it brings me to the reason I'm fallen, and so... I don't know, it's just a moment for me. It has been like two and a half weeks since my last podcast. Forgive me, Father, for I have. No, I haven't. It's all good. Everybody's welcome here, friends, by the way. So um, I am absolutely elated, if that's the right word to use, to show you that I finished my unspun sweater and I am sweating. <laughs> Sweating, positively sweating uh, at the moment because it is warm. It is warm. I will get into that. I have a finished object, this one, that a part of my soul is in because that's how much it took from me, but also delightful. Um, and then I have some works in progress and then I have some other things, a couple of things, a couple of acquisitions um, to show. So it'll be like the normal format um, with a little bit maybe of mental health tossed in here or there because there were moments this, <laughs> this last couple weeks. Um, okay, shall we get to it? So, hello, welcome. I am wearing my Winter's Pullover by Ozetta, and I finished it. I finished it. I mostly, mostly finished it. I don't, I don't know why I haven't done this, but I haven't woven in my ends, and I don't feel like a lesser human for it, so judge away. It's fine. Um, they tuck in just fine. So today, here in Indianapolis, it is an unseasonably balmy, earth is dying 60, currently it is 60, oh, my watch died too. Nope, 64 degrees, and I think it's going to get even warmer, and that is unholy. See previous religious problems. Anyway, I am wearing this, and it is real warm in the sunshine. So, I finished this Ozetta Winters Pullover, and the story with this, if you haven't followed this on my Instagram or on my previous podcast, is that I have never knit with unspun yarn before. And I wanted to try something. And I was like, hey, you know, be cool to do my first unspun knitting project on a garment. A sweater, in fact, it's fine. It's flat in some places and knitting around in others. It's, you know, it'd be awesomer to try another unspun Bun that doesn't have a great idea of how much yardage is in it. And it's also fun to guess at what your gauge would be because 
it changes with unspun wool. It's, it's been an adventure, friends. So let's get into it. All right, this is the Winter's Pullover by Ozetta. I have knitted this in, I ended up deciding on three strands of New to Den. New to Den, um, I got 500 grams of this color, which it might be Gagamoya. I'm not actually sure which color it is. Yeah. Um, and I, I did a swatch because don't come for me. I swatched. And I swatched and I showed it on the last podcast and I decided I really enjoyed the fabric of the uh, triple held. So I did that. And you know, like they say, 500 grams should be good enough for a sweater when you order new to den. And you, if you're lucky enough to like snag this stuff, which is amazing. Don't, don't get me wrong. This stuff is incredible. It's soft and it's also toothy, which is, I love the combo platter, I think. Um, I got a little prick, prickle factor. I, I'm not lying. A little bit here, but otherwise, like, I'm good. It is so cozy and so warm. Um, but I most definitely swatched, and I swatched using the needle they recommend, which is a 10, US 10. And then I swatched using a US 8, and I swatched using a US 6, just to see what fabric I liked best, because I wanted to have something I love and that doesn't always necessarily follow what the pattern writer decides they love or yeah, we'll put it that way. I'm getting to the point in my knitting journey where I am modifying a lot of things or I'm trying to figure out what I like, which is just different than what other people like. Um, sometimes and sometimes it's the same. I don't know. I just want to make stuff that I like and that I will actually wear for all the time that I'm putting in, right? So I decided that I really enjoyed the triple strands of Nutidin held together um, on a size eight. So I knitted this puppy on a size eight. So this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna go into detail about how things work, but essentially you are knitting from the top down um, in pieces initially flat. And it's sort of like casting on here and you like you hit the collar there at the end however you want to do it and then eventually you connect under the sleeves in the round um, and then you knit the sleeves so that's the general it's a drop shoulder pattern it's kind of amazing uh, it's a beautiful pattern it's just um, really well written too this is the first Ozetta pattern I've done um, add that to the list of like, why do I decide to try 8,000 new things at the same time? In the least experimental manner. This is the least scientific methody way I could have approached it. And I was like, you know what, y'all? Let's just go. So it went, and it was fun. <laughs> so I was enjoying the whole process. I really did. I enjoyed knitting it all. Um, and I really enjoyed the fabric that developed. And I will maybe insert here a video of me um wearing this i posted it on my instagram to like a reel once i finished it of you know kind of showing all the details and all but it is a glorious sweater i love this i will wear this in the winter in the six to eight weeks of winter that indianapolis has um i'm currently sweating buckets because it it is a warm sweater but it is glorious so i knitted it and I thought to myself, as I started knitting this self, you know what might happen is that you might potentially run out because you're holding triple. And then I decided that I would go look at the Honor Ock Air, which is, or Honor Ock Air, which is the Swedish um, family owned business that sells new to then. I went on their website again, just to double check. And sure enough, right under the, it takes 500 grams to knit a sweater, it was like held double. And I'm tall, so I wanted to add some length. I'm not always the smartest. So sure enough, I decided, okay, I'm gonna be the smart one about this. This, this is what I was gonna be smart about. I'm gonna be smart about this one thing. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna knit here. But I'm gonna stop, yeah, I'm gonna stop the body, like here-ish. 
so that I can make sure I get enough done because I want arms on this puppy. <laughs> I want arms. I have totally worn this out and about. Whatever. I wanted like nice, long, cozy, squishy arms with not too much taper and like the perfect long, oh, cozy arm, just like the pattern. And I did it. So I got my arms done. And then I had some moments. I had some moments. You know what? I don't even have my leftover yarn here. There's about this much yarn left after in the end because I still had to do this. So I had some moments. I took some pictures of the other unspun yarn that I had because I got to the point where I knew I was never going to make it unless I wanted to show my kneadage. You guys know what kneadage. Yeah, under boobs. I don't want to show that. That's Nobody needs to see that. And then also, I'm six feet tall, so I needed like longer, not shorter. I didn't need to crop it up to my neck, right? I needed it to be longer. So I took pictures of what I had. I had ordered a couple of other colors of Newton when I had bought my initial amount. And I'd ordered a sweater quantity of a gold color. Um, and then two, are they 100 gram? Well, we don't know, 100 gram but no idea on yardage plates of two different colors. One of which was like a slate blue and one of a slate blue, blue, ocean blue. You can see it on my Instagram. Maybe I can pop a picture in here um, of all the colors together. And uh, one of like a rosier brown, it would not, wouldn't have been a good call. So I took those pictures and then I posted it on Instagram and I was like, help. And there are some lovely people that helped. My family did not help because I really liked the gold and I was told that that looked like stool. And for those non-clinical people, stool is poo. They're wrong. Just for the record, they're wrong. At least 50% of people, yeah, thought they were wrong. <laughs> um, but I did happen to have a whole load of plotilope as well and it was in an oatmeal color and i had folks saying i should use the blue i had folks saying i should use the gold um i don't think anybody chose the plotilope oatmeal but i did i'm a rebel <laughs> so i decided i'm gonna finish this off with a color block which somebody had suggested and i thought that was brilliant because i still mind you had to do the collar so i had a little bit left but yeah, I needed to, I needed to do something somewhere. Um, I wasn't sure whether or not I would finish the ribbing in this color or whether I would do collar and ribbing in whatever other color I chose for the color block. So I actually put the rest of my sleeve on hold before the ribbing and then changed the color. So what I ended up doing to, to kind of meet the gauge thing is um, experiment with the plotilope and figured out the two strands of that plotilope would work um, at like a similar gauge on the size eight, so I did that. So I finished off my sweater with the plotilope on an eight. Um, and I did the ribbing on a six on, I think I just did it on the sleeves. In the end, I had enough to finish up my sleeves and to do a neckline, which is another adventure. So this is where we ended up. We ended up with this sweater with a color block on the bottom, which, you know, let me back up because I'm tall here, is extra awesome. I know that a lighter color on the bottom does tend to make you look a little wider, but I actually really like it. And I intentionally kept the same needle size of an eight that I used for the body on the ribbing on the bottom so that it wouldn't cinch in too much because I didn't want it to be like a hip hugging situation. So. Now I'm kind of wondering though, cause it does like, when I sit, it kind of flops, but it's a straight line. There's none of this business happening, which I also was worried about. So we accomplished a, a middle of the way solution. So that's good. So I got the whole thing knitted and then I was working on the collar and I knitted the collar up to like here. And I was like, cool, I could do knitting a little further, folding it down and do a turtleneck. I'm starting to feel a little itchy here with this um but i did it anyway it was more like a mock neck because i didn't like have enough to go like totally crazy 
So it's probably when so down to here and I took some pictures of it and and I don't know if I could find if I took one with the bunching I'll show you but there was bunching in the back below below the sew down and by sew down I mean knit it down all I did was knit it up and then fold it in half and then is it Kitchener or no I just knitted it together with a yarn over in the middle to allow for some flexibility so it was like uh, one from the top of the ribbing and one from underneath um, so I would hold my stitch on the needle yarn over go into one on the bottom underneath pick that up and knit those two together and bind off one I think that's how I did that but anyway it's nice and stretchy um, and it was the same on the other on the other one I finished it though and it had this bunching at the back and it was more like a like right here and you can like there's still a little bit here but it's doable, but it was a little, little bigger than that. And because I'm insane, I decided that the best solution for this was to cut off the collar because I didn't want to re-knit the collar. So of course you should just cut the unspun yarn with scissors, straight up cut it. I threw a lifeline in thinking, Psh, I got this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why? I just wasn't even drunk, friends. There was no alcohol involved. It was like, this is a rational decision. It wasn't a smart decision. Apparently it made sense in the moment. So I cut it. I have another picture here. I cut it. The problem when you cut unspun yarn is that it doesn't act like normal yarn. You end up with these tiny little bits they're all they've been all over my floor for like a week and a half tail bits on the on the pieces that decided to unravel a little bit which is rare because at least it's toothy and it kind of sticks together but like tiny 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 little bits um i ended up tossing the needle in just below where i cut where the lifeline was and then picking up and knitting and ribbing from there back up again I had to unravel the collar I cut because I couldn't reattach that because that part being cut also destroyed that part, the cut off collar. So I had to, I still had to unravel three strands of new today <sighs> into a ball and then attach and re -knit. And so I think this was the best solution. I love this collar. I generally go with crew necks anyway. So it works really well. I think though, like ideally with this kind, just maybe because I saw the pattern, it would be great with that like mock neck situation or like a full over turtleneck. But for this yarn on my neck, I just functionally that wasn't gonna work for me. So this ended up working really well. I love it. I'll wear it like this. Don't cut Newton. It's less grippy than Plotilope. The texture is a little different. So I don't know if you can tell here, this this is like for, you know, wool that's 100% wool and it was unspun. And as you can see, it has all sorts of like prickly bits sticking out. It's not that prickly. It's, it's not bad at all. In fact, I do have this situation going on underneath, which I probably always will with this. Um, and then it goes down into the Plotilope and the Plotilope is scratchier. It's Icelandic unspun wool. So it is scratchier by, by a lot. Um, so by using this, it was an intentional choice to not put Plotilope up by the, my, my neck. Because if Nutidin was making me a little prickle, then the Plotilope was going to be worse. So in the end, y'all, I did it. Sure did. I cast this on like a week or two before Christmas, I want to say. Um, and now it's February 15th. That's pretty good for a sweater, let alone one that kept breaking on me, though. I will say, it's not that bad. Like, in the middle of doing it, I just, you know, you just rub those two ends of the new Tidin together because it's unspun wool, and if you rub it together, the friction allows those fibers to reconnect, and it's just one piece. It was really, it wasn't that bad. It's just that the frequency of having to 
rip out and put back together, I think just super added to the frustration of my last couple of weeks of knitting. So I needed to like, you know, have a moment there. I celebrated, I heard the angels singing, not really, but I did hear birds singing because it's unseasonably warm again and the earth is dying and see previous commentary. Um, but it is everything and I am ever so proud of myself, like so proud. I don't know if anybody else does this, but like have this moment of reflection that you did a thing that's like new to you. Like I make mean, sure other people do it all the time. Other people are like way quicker or whatever, but I am 41 years old and I don't care about other people anymore. <laughs> and not that I don't care about people, but you know what I mean? Like what other people do is lovely for them. I cheer them on. I am not in the stage of life where I'm like, but other people, I don't care. I did this and I'm really proud. So I'm just kind of like so excited about it. Um, my husband was really, really excited about it, mostly because it was done, <laughs> but also because he was proud of me. I mean, it, it was a lot of work. Um, oh, and I can, so, so we'll move on to the works in progress, but I'm going to take this off real quick. So just hold, please. I don't have any elevator music to play, I don't think. Um, oh, God, this is so warm. It's great. I wish I lived in um, Norway or Sweden or Finland for a large variety of reasons these days. But I live in Indiana, so it's a little warm for that. Also, other issues with Indiana. Okay, so anyway, in trying to keep the sun off of my face, I have other works in progress, and I started this last night. And I made the comment, my God, this sweater knitting is so much easier when it's not unspun. I didn't realize that it was that hard. So knitting the unspun sweater, I was having fun, right? So it didn't seem hard. It was stockinette. It was not that bad. My husband and my daughter were like, really? We thought it was pretty hard because we were watching you. And it just kept breaking and it just kept going, do, 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 happily knitting along. But it was horrifying to watch. And I was like, really? I just didn't have that experience. So I cast on a new sweater last night because I felt like it. I decided, what am I knitting? Oh my God, what am I knitting? Um, oh, right. <laughs> I am knitting because I have this goal of stashing down this year, right? Um... I looked at what I had and I'd previously bought a sweaters quantity last year sometime of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino and Soft Silk Mohair in a matching plum clay color. That's about, yeah, that's about right. It's like a brownish plumish plum clay, one would say. <laughs> um, purpley, yeah, light, light purple, light, light purple, do you guys remember that? forget that, what that was from right below if you remember um but so I have these held together to make a truffle sweater and I will put the picture of the truffle sweater so it's a pattern by Pernil La Lawson Larson uh Pernil Larson sorry and it is a double moss stitch sweater and I was like, cool, I could use some texture, right? Like I'm just kind of, I've done a lot of stockinette and I did that beautiful winter's pullover in all stockinette. And I was like, this is like slightly more challenging. I'll do this. So I pulled it all out and I started it and look what I did. Y'all, look, this is, so you start this from the uh, top down. So look at my beautiful three by two ribbing. Um, and this is the neckline, and then after a bit, you go into, I think it's kind of knit the same way with flat for a little bit, and then back down into the round, although it might just be all the way in the round. I can't remember. I did read through it, and I marked up what size I was knitting. Speaking of which, winter's pullover. Size three is what I picked for the amount of ease for my bust size. I'm a bust size 37 inches. Um... And I was in between sizes. So with 16 inches of ease for the pattern of winter's pullover, that size that I ended up going with was a size three 
was for a 38 inch bust and a 54 inch end product. Mine is about 52 inches, which is pretty close. I'm good with that. Um, any hoodles. I am doing the size four or the large of Pernilla, of Pernil Larson's truffle sweater pattern. And it is, <sighs> this is so much easier. This is so much easier. Like I can knit anything. I feel like I'm a superhero knitter and I can knit absolutely anything now, except lace. I don't like lace then again. Like I don't even like the look of lace, which means I'm gonna have to challenge myself to do it a little more because I need to get over that. Because lace is beautiful and like old school lace is amazing. So I don't, mm. anyway, I am knitting on this and I am knitting a large just the size, the fourth size. It goes, starts on um, size US 9 ribbing for my size and um, the body will be on 11. So it is like a big gauge, um, 13 stitches per four inch piece. So it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's gonna be a quick knit, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, we are not supposed to have 60s degree weather. Um, so I'm assuming we'll go back down, God willing, ish, down into the, what's normal here, 40s at this time of year. Um, by no means cold, definitely not Minnesota cold. We should be popping in, like we already have crocuses coming up and stuff, that's a little early, but like March is about right. So I figured I could get this sweater, this last like heavier weight sweater done before like real spring comes. Um, and then I have like a whole bunch of other things in my head that I'm gonna start for the spring very few of which I knew of when I started my 2023 plan. So I guess things might change. But in the meantime, I cast that on last night. As soon as I finished my sweater, my unspun winter's pullover, I have been obsessing over the Saturday Shrug um, by the, do you think it's Jackie from Katie Jack Snits uh, podcast? And she came up with this free pattern and it's super easy. It's just a one by one rib all the way around. Um, I actually decided to do mine in, in yarn I already had. Um, and it is Quince's Phoebe yarn. So it's actually more like a DK weight. And I think the Saturday Shrug was initially for bulky. So I did the maths to add stitches because again not tiny wee um shouldered or statured human needed a little bit more so i ended up casting on closer to 150 stitches i believe with my dk weight combo platter and i chose these colors because i had these this one's like a pearl gray it's really beautiful and this one's like a peachy coral and together I feel like there's some, yeah, you can't, everything's blown out there. That's about right. Maybe it's got a little yellow. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's about right. So I started, you can do whatever you want, guys. It's like a, it's a free pattern. That's more like a recipe. You just kind of like go. So I decided to just like start up here and here's my top. And the idea is you pull it over your shoulders and you know it'll go down as far as you want but it's like a sh like a shawl but it never comes unwrapped right so you're not like messing with stuff um and I'm just making a real simple one I think I'm gonna do not a regular uh frequency of stripes I think I'm gonna make like a thinner stripe next I don't know I'm making it up it depends on how I feel it's gonna be the Saturday mood shrug um, it'll be whatever mood I'm in as I knit it. Not necessarily on a Saturday, but whatever, I'll wear it. It's going to be nice and warm. It's really soft yarn. Quince, um, Quince and Company yarn. I bought a bunch of last year. Um, it's pretty hard to find a yarn company that doesn't have something in their history that makes them controversial. Um, so I, I know that there was a thing, um, a while back. I didn't know much about it. I bought the yarn. The yarn is lovely. That's about what I can say about that because I wasn't here for it. I don't know what was going on. Either way, I do like the yarn. Um, 
It's nice and soft. It's wool. It's uh, really bouncy and squishy. So I love that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm using for this one. I have some other kinds. Um, I forget, they have like bird themed, I want to say, uh, names of their bases, but I can't remember. I know I have other ones. But those are the ones I chose for this one. I'll probably make another. Just It's such an easy one by one rib while you're watching TV or something. It's just glorious. So I highly recommend it for a palette cleanser or whatever else um, you might need it for. Just quick. And then I'm a glutton for punishment. So I had another cast on. Well, I haven't cast it on. I planned it. Never mind. I want to make the Camp Socks by Ozetta. They are let alopey. Let Lopey, Let Lopey, Let Lopey. Um, and they are, maybe I can put a picture here. They are uh, really warm. I need pairs of wool, like wool socks that are really warm. And I think my feet are less sensitive than anywhere else. This is scratchy wool. Mm -hmm. It's Icelandic wool. It's great though. And I used it for a sweater before a cardigan that kind of goes to here. Um, that I never blocked. Interesting, just realized it's fine. Um, I'm gonna make the socks out of them and I think I'm gonna do a color block sock, which would be kind of cool. Maybe darker on the bottom because I'm not that pristine at cleaning my floors. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do the her socks. I'm trying to remember what kind of a heel they have and I can't remember, but I'm in the process of learning the sock situation for my own foot and I did get some recommendations to, to try different types of heels that some of them work better than others and that for people like me with big skis for feet sometimes you have to like increase the depth of the heel so i, th I think i might try that we'll see so i cast on not uh, you know i have done absolutely nothing on my other socks since i broke my chow goo needle but i'll get back to it it's such a pretty sock look Oh, magpie fibers, swanky sock, and miscellaneous DK blue, gorgeous colors. I will finish this sucker if it is the last thing I do. Might be the last thing I do. <laughs> I will work on this 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 week though because I think I'm feeling a sock frenzy coming on. If that's a thing. Such beautiful yarn though, squishy. Okay. I also did some work on my writer's block. Yeah, this is like a work in progress situation this week at this, this podcast. I don't know. Um, okay, my writer's block picture here. Um, I love this cardigan so much. It's so easy. It's such like a, just a chill situation, guys. It's a garter stitch, garter stitch pattern. Um, basically, I chose some Malibu. Brigo Arroyo? Malabrigo Arroyo is this green stuff. And then I want to say I chose wool stock for my beige. And I think it's gravel road, but I think I'm wrong. I don't think it's gravel road. I think it's wool stock. And I think it's an oatmeal. Maybe I can put it in the description box below. So here's the back. So you knit this vertically. You guys see if you can see. Oh, stupid sock. Here we go. You knit this like vertically, right? And you knit it in pieces and you seam it, which we're just not thinking about right now because it sounds horrible. And then here's the next piece. So here's one side of the front. Just a cardigan, right? So like that. Or like that. <laughs> Spatial relationships aren't my strong suit. So I have those, I've had those two pieces done. And I'm working my way on the third one. And I think after this, I'm just connecting, button banding, and moving on with my life. But, I mean, I'm so proud of myself that I, like, able... Do you ever feel... Do you ever feel like you're in... Your brain is in all different places and, like, you're casting on a new piece of an ongoing whip. And it's just sort of crushing in some ways, but also exhilarating in other ways. That's... That's where this one is. But mostly I am super jazzed to wear this because it's actually not super heavy by any means. So I think 
it's gonna be a great kind of year-round in the house sweater just because with air conditioning and stuff much as I hate it it gets hot in Indy and we have to use it so um yeah I've got I've got this that I hopefully will finish I can see I can almost see the light at the end of this tunnel I can almost see the light at the end of this tunnel almost um okay what else do I have oh I have one more I have I've done a relatively good amount of work on this puppy since last time and you can't tell because it is a half and half triangles wrap and it will it will be going until dead and buried no I don't want to be buried nope that's horrifying dead and gone we'll put it that way um it is glorious I there I know I know it's a whole thing and I jumped on some weird trend thing and whatever but it is totally worth it um this is the pearl soho linen quill and there's it's cozy it's squishy it's not scratchy it is uh, and it's linen so the drape spectacular um and it's basically a uh, garter as well so you're just knitting all the way I am doing so this is the triangle D, uh, increase end so um, this is a free pattern in the half and half triangles wrap, so you can go look at it. I'm not telling you anything that isn't already out there. Um, but you basically do short rows on one end and an I cord on the other. It's what I do. Um, I don't think that's in the pattern, but it's like, a, I think Katie Jackson Nets is the one who first tried this. And I really enjoy the border that the I cord is giving on something like this. So I'm going with it. It is what it is. I like it. Um, so I am just about done with my first ball. Linen quill has like 400 yards to it. You need three balls for the large size that I am using because I am large. Um, that's not a bad thing, by the way. People are like, oh, I don't mean it that. I totally, I'm large and that's a good thing. Um, so I have one ball in. It's nuts, right? This is just one ball. However, um, you could, you do three of one color and three of another color. I am one sixth of the way through this giant, giant project. And I love it. It is like the best TV knitting. It's everything it just is. It's great. And it just kind of goes, oh, it's so lovely. I will say the only thing is that you have to, I think you just have to have your like wits about you a little bit so that you, you don't drop, if you drop something, um, I have struggled to pull stuff up if I've dropped near the German short, short rows. And that might just be my level of knitter prowess. I'm not able to pick up in them, maybe in the midst of repeated German short rows. Um, so I've had to go back, I rip back like a line or two or whatever, and just, it's fine. But I really love it. Um, I will show you, I have a stitch marker. Well, this is Progress Keeper. Uh, this is from Christine Parker and your company, I think. Um, it says, fuck off, I'm knitting. I don't know if you can see it. It shows me backwards up on here, but I think it's just a mirror image. So you can probably see it, it says, fuck off, I'm knitting. Um, and it keeps my family at bay. Cause I just go like this. And then they stop talking to me and it's great. Um, and then I have another, um, I do have a stitch marker near my short rows so that I stop when I'm supposed to. And this one is a cat wrinkles. Cat wrinkles? Cat wrinkles? Am I saying it wrong? Um, I love that so much. Uh, stitch marker. So that just tells me where I stop, turn my work. I do German short rows. Some people are doing wrap and turns. Whatever you feel like. Keep this out. Um... So anyway, friends, I'm gonna move over. <laughs> um, my dogs are, so we're gonna, we're just gonna sit and knit. So if you are not into that, um, thank you for joining. Don't forget to hit like or subscribe. Um, but if you wanna stay and knit with me, please do. I am in the process of figuring out how to, how to get um, some, sort of momentum in my life. It, I don't know how you guys feel. I'm gonna knit on my half and half triangles wrap while we chat a little bit. 
Um, so knitting has gotten me through a lot in the last few years. I think that's true for like everybody here. Um, because I, to get through this pandemic has been a task and a half, right? Um, so I have started this whole Midtown Fiber, um, it's a company now, to allow myself a little bit of um, sort of freedom to create and maybe sell some things. And I'm working towards figuring out what that looks like and how to do that um, with both, with all, all of my fiber art. And um, as this is sort of always in the back of my mind as I'm knitting and weaving and spinning, um, and anytime I'm out shopping in local places, it's just on my mind. Um, but what I've noticed, that's, you know, that for me is what's on my mind, but it's coming from a place of sort of moving on. And um, I'm noticing some of this in other podcasters, it, podcasts of late, sort of the life stuff, when, if you stay and tune in to what they're going through or what they want to sit and knit and chat about, might find similarities. Um, life is coming through to these podcasts sometimes and mental health is coming through. And I have noticed, I saw, I was watching a few different podcasts. Uh, what is her name? I'll put it here. I can't remember right now. She is in Germany. She's getting her PhD. She had a moment on her last podcast where she was very frank and very honest and very open about her anxiety and her depression. And I love these moments of real, um, not that the rest of the podcast aren't, but you know, like those moments when you're sitting with a friend where like you're, I have a, I have a friend who calls them Brene Brown moments or Brene, is it Brene Brown? Friends, um, people that you just really connect with or you relate to really well. Um, and she was having one of those conversations and one of those moments where she was just being open and clear about how hard things have been. Um, and that knitting, the same story, has really been something that kept her going. Um, but that life coming out of this pandemic is really hard, right? The things that we coped with and the how we coped and all of those things are coming out now for a lot of people. Um, I was talking to my therapist and she said the same thing. She said that this year, this over this last year and into this coming year, most a lot of people are coming um, to therapy with the same issue that starting again or starting over feels wrong and they're trying to, to become whoever they are after this pandemic, which may not be the same as who they were before. Um, and those those things we always did before we're starting to do again now um, and it's normal again and it sometimes leads to a disconnect or sort of like a yeah like a discomfort um but you don't know why and a lot of it is just our brains going wait but no but this is this is different and now we're different and we aren't the same as we were the last time we did these things so I don't know, I also heard, uh, I think I have had a few conversations with friends too, who are at this time in their lives where they're uh, learning that life is too short, maybe because we're in midlife, I don't know, right? I'm in my forties, maybe that's why. Uh, but we're in midlife and people during this pandemic, you know, we did a lot of things that aren't that weren't normal to us or who we identified as before. But now we're going back to uh, the real world or normal life and we don't necessarily feel like we align with that anymore. Um, so even Amy Beth from Fat Squirrel Speaks, she's also an Indianapolis podcaster. Uh, she also had a moment, she was talking about how she, things she believed about herself on her podcast 
just yesterday or two days ago I watched it, um, realizing things she believed about herself um, and that she's sort of in a process of change from that too. I think hers had something to do with poetry and that she, it, did, it wasn't for her and she wasn't maybe um, the right kind of person to understand poetry or something, but that she's kind of coming around to maybe a different view of that. Um, I think we're all sort of having those moments. So as I sit here and knit and think about a future, you know, business idea for myself, I've never been a business person. It all feels so uncomfortable and so different than being an intellectual, so different than being an epidemiologist, um, so different than being a bedside nurse or a public health nurse, all the things I've done in my life. None of those things are what I'm doing now and I'm happier, um, but I'm terrified, right? What does it look like to open your own business? What does it look like to start something new that I was always told wasn't like maybe the right thing to do? How many of you came, are products of your families, right? My husband and I both came from um, parents who are professors. We grew up in the ivory tower, right? So expectations were one thing about who and what we would become and do. Getting a master's degree was an unspoken expectation, at least one, if not a PhD. Um, and I don't know, like my, my sister has two master's degrees and I've always kind of been feeling like I'm not the smart one. I'm not the smart one, even though I have, you know, been very successful and am a more practical person who did hands-on work. Um, I've always felt like creativity wasn't what, what I was supposed to be doing. I was supposed to strive for more academic pursuits. Even if that wasn't intended, I think that's where our families, it's not like they always intend for us to grow up feeling that way, but we do for whatever reason. And as we hit adulthood, it's on us to figure that stuff out and make our happiness. So I think my happiness lies in being creative, but I just sometimes still don't feel like I, that is something that's right for me or something that's like, I'm not necessarily great at. I'm not naturally inclined towards or something. Rationally and logically, I think that's not true, but the eight-year-old in me thinks that I'm not creative or good at, at any of that. So I fight that sometimes. Do you guys ever do that? Yeah, maybe I'm just babbling on, but I don't know. I appreciate the honesty in some of the podcasts I'm seeing of late about mental health, about anxiety, about this pandemic and sort of where it's taken people. We've all been in our heads a lot. Um, and in a lot of ways that's bad, but sometimes that's really good. Uh, and sometimes it can push us to, to new things. So um, I'm no longer an epidemiologist and I am no longer a nurse, despite what my student loans have to say about that. <laughs> um, but I am something maybe different and just as valid and beautiful and amazing. Um, and maybe because I don't feel good at it, that's exactly where I should be. Yeah, just thoughts from somebody who's got a lot of time <laughs> on her hands. Um, see, look, I can talk and do that half and half triangles wrap. It's pretty miraculous. Oh wait, here's a, hold please. Here's a German short row. Um, hold on. All right, there we go. See, good. Um, yeah, so life-wise, my husband leaves today to go off to go camping in the Grand Canyon for a week with his friends, his college roommate, and some other friends, and I'm excited for him. Do you guys do this um, as couples? I don't know. Or with your partners? I, 
we just start. So the last time he did this, let's preface this. The last time this man went on a trip, I had like basically had to push him and say, please go on this trip because you need it for you being a human. Everybody needs some alone time, some space and something fun and exciting. And I, let's face it, will never go camping in the Grand Canyon with him. I don't want to. Uh, looks real pretty. I will go visit and then I will go sleep in a cabin. It doesn't even have to be fancy. I just don't want to camp in the Grand Canyon by any means. Um, also I get broken easily. I, yeah, it's fine. I don't want to. So the, the, he did this and he came back March, 2020. So he was gone for a week and he had one of the last flights back before they shut down the world. And I had been messaging him while he was in the Grand Canyon. And even before he went away, I'm an epidemiologist. I knew there was a pandemic. It was coming. Um, and I kept saying they're going to shut the schools down. They're going to close the airports. This is something we know, we knew, I don't think other people knew, but we knew was going to happen. And I couldn't get a hold of him because the dude whose satellite phone they were using, it wasn't working. So I didn't hear from him for a week. So I thought he was dead. It was real scary. Um, and then he, he gets back into signal territory. And thank God he was alive. And then it was about getting him home. And then he got home. So now he's about to leave today. And I'm like, please don't have another pandemic <laughs> happen while you're gone. It's it's a loony thing to think, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, I still have a little bit of me that's like, eh. um, but it'll be great. He'll have a lot of fun. And uh, there is a satellite phone that is going to work. And I have another spouse's information too now, so we can connect if we need to, but oh boy, he's going to have a lot of fun. Um, so that starts and I'm looking forward to that, hearing about his trip for him. And then I get to go on my own. You guys, I don't know if I told you because he's going to do this. I, part of my growing as a human and learning that I am different than who I always thought I was, is that I'm going to go on some self trips. So I scheduled my first solo trip. Now I have gone on work trips alone before. I don't know if I've ever been on a trip trip alone. Because in my 20s, when people do this, I was very sick. I, I was in the hospital a lot and I ended up having a whole bunch of surgeries to remove my colon. I had ulcerative colitis. Um, so I didn't get to live that life. So I've never really like traveled on my own or anything. So I really wanted to. So I picked, <laughs> I picked going to Bainbridge Island. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. I wanted to do like something interesting and adventurous, but also sort of like that feeds into that whole quietness that my soul is looking for these days. Um, so in March, in the beginning of March, I get to go on my own on a trip. I'm so jazzed. Um, I go to Seattle, I go to Bainbridge Island, and I'm staying at an inn there. And I'm going to go hit the yarn shops. I am so excited. Um, so I'm going to go see the Lambing Kid and La Mercerie. Um, oh my gosh, it's so jazzed. I'm sorry about all the ums. I don't know where that's coming from. I will go on this trip, and it's going to be incredible. And I'm going to take you guys with me. So I'm going to film stuff and maybe even podcast from there. But it's to feed my soul a little bit and get a little space and learn more about myself and who I am now, who is just, I'm, I'm just different than I was before this pandemic. So I'm so looking forward to that. Ah, so I'm scheduling that. If anybody knows anything about Bainbridge, places I should go in Seattle too, because I'm there on a day on either end, where I should go kind of check stuff out for some whatever is worthwhile. Yes, I understand it's going to be rainy. I'm okay, I'm okay with weather for it. So that's not my concern. Um, I could sit outside in the rain all day. I love that. I don't think that will be a problem. Um, it won't stop me from exploring, we'll put it that way. So please, in the comments, let me know or message me. You can go on Instagram and always send me messages if you'd like. That's lovely. Unless, of course, you're trying to tell me to like... Some guy had some comment about my hairstyle and I was like, it feels like you just told me to smile more. And that's, yuck. 
So don't tell me that, but tell me all the good knitting things and also your travel advice. Um, what are other good places to go on solo trips? Have you guys ever done that? Have you gone on knitting retreats? Vogue, Knit Li Vogue Knitting Live was just this weekend. I had like a huge case of the FOMO. Um, I felt like I was missing out. Yes, 100%. I wasn't, I was just straight up missing out. I don't know if it's a FOMO or just missing out. Um, but it looked so much, looked, looked like so much fun. So I was wondering if maybe I wanted to go do that in the fall. Maybe I'll go do, um, Rhinebeck. I've always thought about it, but I don't know. I also don't know how I'd be doing it by myself. I don't, I don't know. Like that seems like more of like a, you have a group of people and you go. Um, I tried to get into the shake rag workshops, but I didn't, my name didn't get picked for that. Um, and they only have limited space, so I think that was it. But yeah, I I would love to hear what you guys do for like a solo trip, a knitting trip, or just like to go adventure on your own. Send me your recommendations. I think I'm going to leave it here for now. I love you all. I am so grateful for anybody who sits here and watches me ramble on and nerd out hardcore on stuff. Um, because, yeah... I don't have that many people to talk to about this. I think that's why a lot of us are on the YouTube's um, podcast stuff. So anyway, thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a very successful week of knitting. I hope to see you guys again very soon. Don't forget to hit subscribe um, and to like and follow. I think you can even hit like a bell thing for an alert for the next time something comes up. But yeah. Enjoy your day. I hope you get some good weather, some vitamin D in the sunshine, some time for yourself, some space for your brain and your soul.